Hello and welcome to Next Tech Pitmaster. I'm Kelly Wirtz, Four Legs Up Barbecue in Great Bend, Kansas. Today we're talking about turkey porchetta. We're actually going to take <clears throat> a turkey breast, um, debone it, uh, unroll it, stuff it with stuffing, roll it back up, uh, tie it up, and then uh, show you how to grill it. Uh, for a nice uh, browned exterior and nice and tender and moist interior. Now the idea from the turkey porchetta actually comes from um, normally they would do this type of thing with a pork belly. Unroll that pork belly, um, lay out some stuffing, there's several different kinds of ingredients you can use on it, uh, roll it back up, tie it, uh, either run it through a deep fryer to crisp that outside or fry it in a frying pan and then uh, go ahead and put it in the oven and bake it to finish it off. We've kind of taken that idea and moved it over to Turkey since this is Thanksgiving and Christmas. I thought maybe this would give you some different ideas, something different to do with Turkey. You know, if you're tired of the smoked Turkey, the fried Turkey, the baked Turkey, all the rest of it. Um, it takes a little bit of work, but again, uh, the rewards are going to be well past your expectations. So let's go ahead and get started. And what um, I've got, what we're going to use today is just a whole turkey uh, from, the, from my local store here in town. Um, you can do this by buying a turkey breast. Um, either bone, bone in or just a whole turkey breast. Um, make sure it's not a turkey breast roast though. It needs to be just the turkey breast. I, <clears throat> I did a couple of those. They work, they work fine. Just first time out to see how they're going to work. Um, my only my only problem with that is to buy a pre-trimmed out turkey breast. One breast is about ten dollars, uh, ten to twelve, depending on what you're buying. Whereas I buy this whole turkey for fourteen, fifteen dollars, and I actually get two breasts off of here we can use uh, for our turkey porchetta. Um, go ahead and throw the pack of gravy away. You know, you got the neck and you got the giblets in here, gizzards, giblets, whatever they are. I try to stay away from them one way or another. If you like giblets, you'd be out of luck on this one because they're not even in here. Anyway, so you want to leave that turkey breast up. What we're going to do is we're going to just fillet the turkey breast right off of the carcass. We start by actually trimming the skin back pretty close to the leg over here. Just cut it down. There we go. On both sides. Just don't get into the breast itself. And watch your own fingers. A sharp knife always works much better than a dull one, so keep your knife sharp. And then with your finger, just run right across the top of the breast here and you'll feel that keel bone. Go right beside that keel bone with your sharp bone and knife. Just cut it down. Follow the wishbone along down through the skin. Stay out of the cartilage on the carcass itself. Just fillet that right off of that carcass. Don't be scared of it. It's no big deal. Then again on the other side, go on the other side of that keel bone. I got 
turn it around again. And again, just follow that wishbone around. There they are. Keep those if you like them. And again, on this side, just Lay that right off of the carcass. Stay out of the cartilage on it, though. Say so it doesn't have to be a pretty job. I got into the wishbone just a little bit there. There we go, we got those two out. Notice we have our turkey in the plastic bag just to help contain the mess and the juice from the actual brine that they actually they brine the turkey in. So now we got our breasts off of there. Flip them over skin side down. You'll have the tenderloins. And just like that, trim those off. We'll save those for later. There's the tenderloin on that one. Say so it doesn't have to be exact, so don't get concerned about it. Oh, there's the old dreaded pop-up meat thermometer. Forgot that part. Pull that out, get rid of that. And then with your knife, lay it flat and horizontal with the turkey breast. Notice this side of the breast is much thicker than this side over here. We're trying to get it even thickness all the way across to the same thickness as this end down here. So if you lay your knife horizontal like this, hold on to it with your fingernails and just cut horizontally. and just open that up just like that. Okay, let's try the other one. Same thing. <clears throat> you might even have to just put your knife down on the cutting board. There might be a little uh, silver skin or cartilage in there Maybe a little tough to get through, but you'll get through it. Don't worry, you won't notice that when we get done cooking it. Just open that up, lay it out just like that. With the skin on the back side, leave it on. You will be okay. Now I'm just going to set this one aside, and we're just going to work with the one. Now we got that fairly uniform thickness all the way across. Now we're just going to cut some cross hatches in it. Just be careful, don't go through all the way. There we go. Just what we're looking for. Open that up a little bit. Okay, we've got our turkey breast kind of filleted out with some cross hatches in it. Now we're ready for the stuffing that we're going to put into it. What we've got here is. Um, Eight ounces of fresh mushrooms, uh, sauteed down in one stick of butter. 
Um, when those mushrooms get about halfway done, uh, we're going to add uh, about five or six uh, stalks of celery, uh, diced fine. When those start getting softened up, we're going to add um, one whole onion, diced fine. When those onions start getting softened up, we're going to add about four to five cloves of garlic, minced real fine. Um, as soon as that garlic hits fragrant smell, about 30 seconds, shut the heat off. Then we're going to add one more stick of butter, or half a stick of butter. Yes, butter is good. Let that melt at, when the heat's turned off. And then we're going to add a cup of breadcrumbs. What I like using for breadcrumbs is uh, cornbread stuffing mix. Throw it in the food processor. Um, pul pulverize it down to that breadcrumb texture. Uh, I like that. It gives you a little bit more flavor. Uh, with that spice mix in that cornbread stuffing mix. Uh, nice, the cornbread gives it a nice texture. Um, and then pull that out of your pan, put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator. Let it get good and cold. Then we're going to pull it back out again, put the whole thing in, back in the food processor, and pulse until we have just a nice fine meal. If you got any large mushrooms or large celery pieces, that'll help break those up. Um, and then before, right before we go to putting that back in to stuff our turkey breast, bring it out, get it to room temperature, throw it in a microwave for 20 seconds or so to warm it up just so it's a whole lot easier to work with. Now that recipe for that stuffing, which um, will be on the video uh, and will also be on the Next Tech website, give you a little bit better idea how to do that. That recipe is enough stuffing for two of these turkey breasts. So if you've got if you got a whole turkey and got two breasts, that stuffing recipe will work for two of them. It's also a good recipe for if you want to um, roll out a pork loin, make a stuffed pork loin, stuffed pork chops, um, a uh, skirt steak, flank steak, something like that that you want to roll up, roll some stuffing into it. It's a very savory stuffing. The recipe calls for that in that stuffing mix calls for. Uh, two tablespoons of salt, and yes, that is plenty of salt in that stuffing, but we're not adding any more salt to um, this chicken breast at all. So there's plenty of salt in there to take care of that. Just work that in to those cross hatches real good. There we go. Yeah, you'll lose a little bit on the edge of the cutting board. Turn that around sideways. Then just roll it back up. Fairly snug. But not tight enough that you're squeezing the stuffing back out of it. The thin end of the breast over here on this side, we're going to kind of tuck in. <clears throat> so now we've got a nice uniform piece, same size all the way through, so it's going to cook even. Okay. Now we're going to tie it, and I forgot to get the twine out. Uh, just regular old cotton butcher's twine. Get yourself plenty of it. When you think you have enough, get about twice that much more. You can always cut the excess off.
I'm not very good at tying these, but we'll get through it. Tie them pretty tight. You want them good and snug. They don't have to be so tight that you're squeezing. Stuffing back out of it. Run them about every, well, about every inch or so. Again, this is something I don't do every day, so I'm not really very good at it, but. Just bring it down, bring it under, bring it underneath that one. Telling you how to do this is trying to like telling somebody how to tie a knot on the phone. Doesn't work very good. You just gotta practice. There we go. Yeah, we're about every inch. Some of them we didn't hit quite exactly. We can move that just a little bit here yet. You get the last one. Loop it underneath. Come on. Where is it? There it is. Tie it off, cut your excess off, and there we go. We're looking pretty good. We're going to move this one just a little bit. There. Some of the skin may have pulled up a little bit as you tied it, but that's okay. Just reach in there, pull it back down. And no, you're not going to have skin all the way around that breast. That's okay. There we go. That is a stuffed rolled, what we're going to call a turkey porchetta. We're going to stick that in a bag. Let that, uh, we're going to bag that, let it sit in the refrigerator overnight, um, up to a day or so, uh, depending on what time you have to uh, get that done, rolled up, and when you're going to cook it for serving. The the rest of this carcass then, uh, the tenderloins, you can go ahead and take and grill those off. Uh, make some nice little tenderloin turkey medallions. Um, if you want to uh, go ahead and pull the legs and the thighs and the wings off, uh, smoke those up in your smoker for a smoked turkey leg, you can. Um, dump them all in a stock pot, make some... Uh, uh, turkey stock out of it, the carcass and everything. If you want to throw the whole thing in the smoker, uh, go ahead and get some smoke on it, and then you'd have a nice smoked turkey stock. Um, do what you want to with it. Um, go ahead, and then you can also finish the other turkey breast off. You've got enough stuffing for to do both of them. We're just going to do the one to show you today. Um, and then we'll come back and show you how to go ahead and uh, grill those off. We got our uh, turkey porchetta. It's been sitting overnight. Uh, we're out to our Louisiana wood pellet grill. Uh, we're actually running on the flame broiler. 
on our Louisiana grill. Uh, we can actually slide the grease tray down. We've got a flame broiler there we can use. Uh, we're just going to roll this uh, turkey porchetta on that flame broiler until we get a nice good brown sear on it. Um, there's several different ways you can do that. You, know, you can do it uh, in a deep fryer. You can do this uh, with a couple inches of oil and a skillet on your stove. Uh, but what, really what we're trying to do is get that outside nice and brown. Brown and crispy. And then on our grill, we're going to set it over to the side and let it finish up. If you've got a deep fryer, you can just drop the whole thing in the deep fryer uh, for a couple, three minutes. Get that outside nice and brown. If you don't have a deep fryer or a flame broiler like we have here, um, you can do this almost the same thing with a couple inches of oil and the bottom of a good heavy cast iron skillet. Put that uh, porchetta in the hot oil, just enough to brown get a good brown on all sides. There we're starting to brown up already. Looks like I missed getting that end tied up real good. That's okay. Uh, we'll just keep rolling that here for a little bit. To, there we go. You gotta do have to kind of watch fairly close uh, with the fat in that turkey skin. Uh, you may get some flare-ups. Uh, you may get a couple spots that are a little dark, uh, but that's okay. Also be careful if you are doing this in hot oil um, with the moisture that's in that turkey skin with the fat in it, you may get some uh, pop-ups out of that oil on your pan at home. That's why I kind of like doing them out here on the grill. Uh, if it does flare up, uh, popping some oil and some grease, uh, I'm not too worried about it. You can see we're getting a nice brown on it. A few dark spots, but that's okay. We'll just keep rolling and keep checking on it. Should probably take about 10 minutes on the grill to do this uh, with your open fire where we can actually flame broil and get that brown outside. If you don't have that um, and you don't want to do it inside, you can still go ahead and uh, roast these about 400 degrees. Uh, probably take 45 minutes or so. Uh, we're shooting for a final temperature of right at 150 degrees, which will be plenty for this. This was a brine turkey breast to start with, uh, right out of the package. Um, so we're not too worried about it drying out, but yet I still don't want to take it up to uh, too high a temperature. We are going to be roasting this, finishing it up at about 400 degrees, so there's going to be a lot of carryover heat. It will carry over about 15 degrees. Well, we've got our porchetta off the grill. Um, again, we brought it to internal temp of about 160 degrees. Since we're roasting at 375 to 400, that will be fine. Actually, we brought it off about 150. With, with roasting at 375 to 400, uh, we've got enough carryover heat on that small of a piece of meat that it's actually going to carry up to 160, 165, which is right where we want it. Uh, we've let it set and rest uh, for about an hour or so, wrapped up in some foil. 
Um, now we are ready to uh, take the butcher's twine off and cut and serve. Snip those cross pieces with your scissors. Then that twine should just come right off. There we go. Now we can start slicing. Again, we're going to use that uh, serrated knife. We may have some pretty good crust on it, but usually if we've let that set and rest, there's enough moisture in that foil that it's going to soften that skin up so it's not really crusty. We're going to slice on the bias so we can make a nice serving out of it. Again, the recipe for the turkey porchetta is on the video here, as well as will be on the Next Tech website. Also notice the cutting boards we're using are a disposable cutting board, which are really nice, especially for the raw meat that we've been doing, the turkey, the chicken, uh, any raw meat that you're prepping. Um, they're nice um, disposable, so you to get done with your raw meat, you just throw the things away. Most people don't have a sink big enough to wash one of these. I don't. Um, and I like a big cutting board, gives me room to work. Uh, for about two bucks, you can use these, throw them away. I'll also cut them in half if you're working on smaller stuff. Um, but see us on our, on our website at fourlegsupbbq.com. You can get a hold of us from there to get the cutting boards. We've got our turkey porchetta sliced. If you can see right there. One of these will serve one, maybe two people, at least around our house. It should serve about six people. Um, set those medallions out. They go great with some scalloped sweet potatoes, which we'll actually be doing a uh, video on some uh, sweet potato au gratin. And there we go. We've got some nice turkey porchetta. We see our uh, stuffing in the middle. Um, we've got it cooked to a proper temperature so you don't have to worry about the stuffing uh, harboring any bacteria. The stuffing's been cooked as w enough as well. Um, but just makes some nice, beautiful servings. A little bit something different for your holiday, uh, Christmas, whatever you've got going on. Uh, it takes a little bit of work, but it's well worth the time and effort. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.